Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new F1 Esports video. This is the championship decider around Brazil, round 12 of the 2021 F1 Esports series. Here you can see the standings heading into the final round of the year. We are 21 points ahead of Frederick Rasmussen. Lucas Blakely is out of the title race. And it's going to go down between me and Freddy, just, just like last year. And um, yeah, both, we are pretty bad on this track. So that makes it a lot more interesting. Um, but yeah, last year um, I ended up doing pretty well um, in qualifying around. Better than expected. I think I qualified P6. For one of my worst tracks, I was pretty happy with that at the time. Uh, I think Freddy was just behind me. Um, and yeah, now it's a bit of a different story this time because we've already won the Constructors' Championship and Red Bull is purely going to be focusing um, on the driver's title for Freddy Rasmussen. Whereas last year, we were still fighting for the Constructors' Championship with Alfa Romeo. Um, so Red Bull couldn't really afford to put everything on the driver's title um, as it was just a little bit too risky. You can see here we are on our first run of Q1 um, and it's a little bit of uh, traffic paradise heading into the final sector. Uh, so I'm just trying to aggressively weave my tires to put some temperature in there as the Ferrari of Domenico Lovecce is going pretty slowly into that final corner. Uh, I think he's making his debut here. I'm not sure if he's done a race before this. Um, but David Tenitza is, is not racing, um, which is weird because usually he's pretty good around Brazil, knowing from past experiences. But um, Domenico driving this race for Ferrari together with Brandon Lee into turn one then for the first time. Bit of endless there, as the track is not gripped up quite yet um, in this Q1 session. Daniel Adat with a 106.294. Um, we're going to try and aim to go a little bit faster. Into the second sector then, with 2.6 tenths up on Matthijs van Erven. But he has said that a lap on the mediums. A lot of people went out on mediums. Uh, I decided not to, um, because I just simply never do. You know, um, on this track, the mediums are too far off the pace to uh, be representative. So I felt like there was no point in doing that, and it would just put me a little bit off. So um, into the final sector in a few seconds. Uh, Marcel Kiefer with a 106.161. He's really fast around Brazil as well, usually, together with Nicolas Longue. Probably the two fastest drivers around this track uh, on this game. And opening the DRS then for the final time this lap. It is going to be a 106.342, putting us in P6. But still a lot of people having to cross the line. So mm, probably not the greatest... Um, of lap so we had to go again for another push lap and use a second set of new tires which is not ideal of course of course you want to go into q2 on just one set of tires but we just had to we went purple middle um so that was pretty good up to p4 in that q1 session later on we dropped down to p6 we have a shocker brendan lee out in q1 uh together with his ferrari teammate dominico lovecce fabricio de Noto out in q1 as well um which is not ideal, his teammate up in P1. As I said, Nicolas very fast around Brazil usually. Um, so it's always probably going to be tougher for Bicho to beat him. But out in Q1 is a little bit painful for him. But it is what it is. Uh, this is our second used tire run. We only have one new set remaining uh, in Q2 because we used two new sets in Q1, of course. And it's a 106.297. So I went faster uh, or similarly fast in Q2 on a U set as I did on a new set in Q1 which is interesting but now this is going to be a very important one we're currently P8 and this is going to be a one or only lap um, on a new set of tires and this is going to count because if we do not get a lap together here we are going to be out in Q2 through the first sector we are around half a tenth up and then in the middle sector is where we're going to make up time on this new set of tires as uh, so that's the mechanical crit part and it's going to be so important to hook it up. Nice apex there. A little bit wide through this next left-hander. But still, we're going to be 1.5 tenths up as we head into the next right-hander. Sebastian Jupp Jup jumps up to P13, I think so. Or maybe it was someone else who uh, jumped up further on the grid. 1.3 tenths up on Lucas Blakely. He was in P9. 
and through the final corner it is looking very good for us at the moment uh, currently p10 is a 106.260 from lucas blakely we're still in a lap as well so we cannot celebrate too early yet but it is going to be p3 for now and that basically says it sees us going into q3 pretty easily we drop down to p5 you can see how close it is already top 10 covered in one tent fortunately our teammate danny moreno out in q2 which is not the end of the world you know we've already won the constructors championship um all we have to do now is win this drivers championship p3 on our used tire run a half tent behind nicolas longe who had a new set of tires together with marcel kiefer i think they were the only ones that had new tires so um yeah pretty happy with that good um benchmark uh set for myself but this is the one that's going to be so important new set of tires the only lap we're going to get on a new set of tires and this one is going to be crucial freddy rasmussen in p4 right with us in the battle for pole position into turn one we go a little bit of a time gain on minimum speed a few thousands and through the next left hand that we go we're going to be three hundreds up on our last set lap time in two sector two with 3.4 hundreds up on nicolas longe and we're going to try and gain a bit more in that middle sector middle sector is so crucial a lot of time to be gained there and through the next right hand you can see we're gaining time all the time through that fast right hand there marcel kiefer 106.002 through the next left hand the back end wants to step out there as we're on the limit of that rear tire lucas blakely jumps up to p2 and still a lot of people to cross the line freddy rasmussen stays in p5 and that means he has not improved his lap alvaro Caraton up to p3 then bit of a moment on the exit we're pushing the rear tires you can see we overheated a little bit which would have cost us a little bit on that exit but nicolas longe goes to pole position with a 105.890 absolutely dominated that lap and all across the field it was super close you can see with 300s behind marcel kiefer and then suddenly there's a one tent gap from nicolas who is just so far ahead of everyone else over a tent clear on a pretty short track but crucially frederick rasmussen in p10 our championship rival six positions behind us um i'm pretty happy with a p4 considering it's a pretty weak track for me so really happy with that you can see if we would have gone one and a half hundred slower we would have been down in p6 so crucial there for us to step up in that q3 session you can see there loading up into the race now um nicolas longe on the softs looks like he's the only one on the grid starting on the softs as far as i can see from here um so he's probably gonna pull off into the distance with that strategy um you can see there's simon wagon and alessio di capo are disqualified from the formation lap so they're gonna have cold tires um starting the race so that's not ideal in such a short race um but yeah it is what it is for them um or teammate danny moreno starting in p13 might be able to help us a little bit in this fight for the driver's title with freddy rasmussen starting three positions ahead of him um yeah our final formation lap of the year is done and now it's gonna be the most important race of the season 21 point lead at uh, friday rasmussen and all we have to do is finish ahead it's gonna be five red lights for the final f1 esports race of the season and we get a pretty decent start clear of barry borrowment into turn one we are having, having a little look down the outside of lucas blakely which turns into the inside but of course not gonna take any risk with lucas who is just gonna fight for his own race here um decided to back out of it and uh, let him go no point in fighting hard this early on you can see sebastian job with a massive sand on barry borrowment and i'm not gonna expect any nice favors from sebastian this race as of course alpha tauri and red bull are basically one team alfa with a massive sand he is on the soft compound tires so he's gonna have to make moves early on and that's what he was doing down the inside of sebastian job that early on um if alvaro does attack me at the end of this lap i'm not gonna fight him because that soft compound is so much faster around here that you can see nicolas longe is already well over a second ahead of um marcel kiefer 
So, yeah, the pace advantage is going to be huge. So, no point in fighting Alvaro if he attacks me into turn one. He's not going to, I think so, uh, because he's three turns back. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be safe from Alvaro for now. But I expect him to attack pretty soon on that softer compound. And just half a lap later, you can see he's two turns behind me. I just decided to open the door. There's no point in fighting this. It will just harm my own race and just put a necessary risk on the championship. You can see Alvaro, Car um, sorry, Nicolas Longe with a 108.5. And at the end of lap eight, Lucas Blakely and Marcel Kiefer both diving into the pits for a set of softs. And that's very early, but you know, track position is crucial around here. Alvaro Carlton, 1.2 seconds ahead. I decided to push a little bit with my ERS to try and get back into the DRS of Alvaro. Um, but with that middle sector coming up, I expect him to probably still pull a gap because that soft compound just stays faster for so much longer um, that I expect after nine laps, he's probably still going to be faster um, through that middle sector. Um, although we, we have gained a little bit um, so far, but I'm going to pit this lap to try and cover off everyone behind me. As you can see, Yoni Tomala 1.6 seconds behind. He is probably not going to do me any favors as well in this race. So we cannot uh, afford to be undercut by him. Uh, Sebastian Job has pitted as well. So he's going to undercut us probably as well. So that's another Alpha Tauri um, to pass. We will get DRS on this lap. But I decided to still box and go for the track position. You can see we've used so much ERS on um, this in-lap. Uh, just to try and cover off that... Um, and they got from other people, but as I said, soft compound is so strong around here that they're probably still going to undercut this by quite a lot anyway. Uh, Barry Bormand and Yoni Tormala follow us in, so it's probably good that I box that lap to cover off Yoni. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of fastest laps coming through Brendan Lee with a 107.6, and we're going to be coming out ahead of him, but crucially behind Sebastian Job, which is not really what I wanted um, because he is not, as I said, going to do us any favors. He is part of that Red Bull esports team. So now we've got some work to do. Daniel Adat is up first. I'm going to turn on the overtake button. You can see he's starting to flash, which means under 10% ERS, low deployment. And we're going to go down the inside of Daniel Adat into turn one. And you can see there, Alvaro Caraton was flashing as well. He's on a set of new mediums, which is going to be a lot slower. And he is flashing. So I'm going to turn on the overtake button, go down the inside here. And it's going to be a pretty straightforward pass with the help of that overtake button. More ERS. And what we're going to have to do now is close that gap to Sebastian Job. You can see they're fighting a little bit up ahead. Um, but our teammate, Danny Moreno, still behind Freddy Rasmussen. Um, both on the mediums. I expect Freddy to probably go pretty long. Uh, as you can see here, Simon uh, uh, right in front of me. Three second penalty. He still has to make a pit stop. Um, so he's not really in this race. I was a bit confused which, what was going on here. Simon, I think, tried to let me go, but I got confused. And the train up ahead was going so slow that it was hard to see what was going on. And it's turning into a very big train here. I'm going to go around the outside of Simon and clear him. I think Simon might have damage. That's why he was so far behind. Of course, he was disqualified from um, the formation lap, so that didn't really help as well, probably with the start of his race. Freddy Rasmussen, our championship rival, is boxing at the end of lap 14. So he's going to have five lap fresher tires than us. And, you know, with all this battling going on, which I'm quite sure is done on purpose to slow me down and helping Freddy... Um, not lose any time on that medium stint. Um, Freddy is definitely still in contention for the win here. And that means in contention for the championship. So I really need to watch um, what is going on here uh, in front of me at all times. Because that train is going as slow as possible to try and hold me up. You can see we boxed four or five laps ago. And Freddy is only two or three seconds behind us on a new set of softs. When in reality, boxing four or five laps early on a set of softs is going to gain you maybe seven, eight seconds. Now we're going to go down the inside of Alvaro Caraton. And the train is going so slow. I'm going to go around the outside here. Uh, Alvaro is probably not going to take too much risk uh, against me. 
Um, he knows I'm fighting for a championship as well, of course. So I'm going to turn on the overtake button, try and go around the outside here and turn on the DRS as well. Uh, we had a pretty much a full battery, so that's why I'm just using all of it here because I want track possession uh, and get behind Sebastian Job again. Um, because, yeah, he is going to try and slow us down. So I want to get ahead ASAP um, and try and get ahead of Marcel Kiefer as well as... He is trying to hold up that group of training because he is leading. And the reason he and um, he pitted was probably just to try and control the pace of the train. So looking back at it, maybe should have gone longer on the mediums. Just do whatever Freddy is doing. Um, but looking back, it's always easier um, to see my mistakes live. There was just so much pressure um, to try and keep track position um, but yeah probably not the best strategy in the end now lap 16 Marcel is trying to let Nikos go I get hit really hard from behind and I was still looking back I'm really not impressed with what was going on there of course um, because that just very much looked like uh, a blatant brake check um, and I think Alvaro or Barry definitely have damage now uh, so they're going to be out of this race um, because yeah just the five cars ahead of me just instantly stopped out of nowhere, uh, which was really confusing. Um, but now, Freddy Rasmussen, 1.1 seconds behind us. And you can see I'm lifting in here because I want to keep my front wing. <laughs> um, I choose life. As I simply didn't know at the time what was going on um, at f up front uh, all the time because they were just stopping very suddenly, especially into the last corner, for example. So um, I decided to just keep distance at all times and probably if I didn't into the last corner I would have wing damage now and that will be race over um, so now Alvaro Carvaton still behind us Freddy probably going for a move into turn one on that so much fresher set of soft tires and now it's going to be very very difficult to keep him behind you can see we've got 20% wear on the tires and he's basically on three lap all tires. Luckily, we've been able to save tires quite a lot so far, simply because the train has been going so slow uh, at all times. At some point, I think we were lapping four or five seconds per lap slower than we could have, um, simply because of all the shithousery simply set um, to try and get Freddy back um, up front on that alternate strategy, of course, which in some way, is completely fine. I think they did overstep the line a few times, uh, like into that final corner um, a few laps ago. Um, but now, Freddy, right behind me, you can see I'm taking some alternate lines just to try and hold him up a little bit um, as Lucas is up to P1. And I just want Lucas to kind of get away because we are 21 points ahead. Uh, if Lucas wins, that means we are safe. And... If Freddy wins, that means we need to get at least P8, I think so. Um, so yeah, we either need to stay in this position or Lucas needs to get away. You can see I'm using so much ERS to just try and keep Freddy behind. You can see Sebastian and Marcel into turn one tripping a little bit over each other. And they try and fend me off. The I think they have so much less ERS than me. You can see both of them are flashing and we still have 40% ERS, but they're going too wide into the next left-hander. And I have to run a little bit wide to go around, uh, around the outside of Sebastian. And now Freddy is right next to me. And I wanted to pull to the left, but Freddy was right there. And now Marcel is blocking me on the apex. And I'm straight away going to go down the inside of Marcel to try and get some track position and gain a position um, compared to him. I really want to get out of this point to try and follow Freddy around, basically. Um, sounds weird because he's my championship rival, but if I can follow him around, sneak through when he gets past Sebastian, then we basically have asked some, in some way clear air because Sebastian and Marcel are obviously trying to block me and make me lose time. And if I get ahead of them, that's not possible anymore. So I'm using my battery as much as I can here to try and sneak through with Freddy. Freddy's flashing as well. And you can see I'm having a little look, but... I was just slightly too far back, too big of a risk to go for a move like that. And I'm going to turn on the overtake button again on this exit to try and have a go into the next left-hander, into the slipstream. I'm going to turn to the outside here. Freddy is um, being held up by Nicolas. I think at this point, Nicolas 
um, was a little bit done with the Red Bulls as well. They've lost him a lot of time, I think so. Um, uh, Nicholas has a five second penalty as well. So he's probably going to drop out of the points because it's such a train behind us uh, as the pace has been so low. Um, so yeah, we have a try and have a little look to try and get past Sebastian at this point. But he's just covering it off very nicely. And there's nothing we can do at this point uh, other than just sit behind. So, yeah, Freddy probably going for a move on this lap on Nicolas um, as he's going to get de rest down the main straight. And then Freddy's going to hunt down Lucas, who is on pretty old tires at this point. So, at this point, I was just thinking, Freddy is going to win this race. I have to keep this position. Otherwise, we're going to be on the risk of the championship. Yellow flag as our teammate Danny Moreno retired from the race uh, after a desync incident. So, um, if you guys remember the incident I had with David Tenitsa in Canada, uh, one of the most controversial moments in uh, F1 Esports. Um, basically, Danny had the same, but he was the victim this time. Someone just crashed into him, basically. But for that person, he was not in the screen. So, there's nothing that person uh, can do. Um, because, yeah, he's just simply not there on the screen. And that's why Danny got crashed out. Um, very unfortunate, but nothing both drivers could do there. Um, but now, back to the actual race. Um, still P5 and net P4 behind Sebastian Job. We just have to hold it out slightly longer. I think Freddy is almost out of the DRS from Nicolas now. I don't expect Nicolas to fight back at all. Um anymore because that soft compound from Freddy is still so much faster and it's still so fresh that he will catch Lucas as well eventually. I was having a little look into turn one uh, at Sebastian Job and you can see now I'm looking behind at all times to see what Marcel is doing um, with his overtake. I knew he had more ERS so I just had to turn on the overtake slightly later and turn it off slightly earlier and still be able to cover him cover him off which I did he went for a big move down the inside but the next corner it turned to the inside for me and that way I managed to keep my track position didn't use any overtake on this next straight to try and save it for that last lap because I expect Marcel to have one big final push on the last lap and you can see I've got quite a big gap to Sebastian here um, as I know he's just gonna slow down in the middle sector to try and hold me up because there's no way he is losing half a second to me in this middle sector um, so yeah, he's slowing me down and trying to back me up into the traffic but um, I got used to this game eventually after um, the past 15 laps of this so it was getting pretty easy at this point to counter it now one lap remaining one lap standing between me and my second F1 Esports World title. Um, Red Bull has not made it easy, but it's just one more lap of trying to avoid them and trying to negotiate with their holding up techniques. We're going to get DRS um, for the second last time in this race. Marcel four tenths behind, so no pressure from there. Um, again, big gap to Sebastian into the middle sector as I expect him to slow me down. You can see he lifted there into the next left hander um, because I expect them to play some big games here on that final lap. Some last maneuvers to try and back me up into the traffic. You can see Marcel's very close. Sebastian is lifting and I get hit very hard from behind. And as you can imagine at the time, I was absolutely fuming with that because I almost lost the car into that right hander. Um, my car was going to the left when the corner was going to the right and Josh has made a move. Marcel has wing damage now so he's going to drop outside of the points. Josh right behind me now um, and on to the final straight then. We're going to be F1 Esports World Champion for the second time in a row and Red Bull threw everything at me today in this final race in an attempt to try and help Freddy, but we're gonna come across the line in P5. We're gonna finish officially P4 because of the penalty from Nicolas. And we are a two-time F1 Esports World Champion after a very, very tough season um, with basically a lack of qualifying pace. But we managed to fight back every single time in the race. Some crucial moves were made. Um, thinking back at moves like uh, USA, 
where I managed to win the race in the last lap. Um, one race before this, Mexico, where I let Freddy go in the last lap to try and get DRS. Um, if I didn't that, do that move, uh, I simply would not be champion now. It's, it's mad to think that such little actions have such a big impact at the end of the season. Um, China is a great example as well that probably would have been a zero point finish if I didn't go for that intermediate strat and um, go from last to first. So it's been a mad season, but I hope you guys enjoyed every single video this season. Um, next season, I will make sure the video quality is a lot better. Um, can't wait for the new game. Can't wait for another F1 Esports season to start. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe um, if you guys want to see more F1 content. And see you guys next time. Ciao.